Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cloud Native Supply Chain Security with Tekton and Sigstore. I'm Christy Wilson. I'm a software engineer at Google, and I lead the Tekton team. And I'm Priya Wadwa. I'm a software engineer on the Google Open Source Security team, and I work on a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today. So this might seem like it's coming out of the blue since real discussions about supply chain security haven't really been happening until the past couple of years. But the reality is that even if it wasn't on your radar, um, it's been a big problem and it's definitely something you should be paying attention to. If it hasn't affected you yet, it might just be because you've been lucky. So your supply chain is under threat. And it turns out that these supply chain attacks are far from theoretical. There are more and more of them all the time. A recent report released by Sonatype, and since we're recording this in advance, we don't know if other people have been mentioned this in their talks, so this might be the fifth time you've heard about this, but this recent study shows that there's a 650% year-over-year increase in supply chain attacks. And this isn't just a nuisance. It's costing you a lot of money. And that's why it should be really high priority. Recent studies are showing the cost is in the trillions of dollars. Again, you've probably seen all these zeros already today, but that doesn't make them any less real. But luckily, uh, it is not all bad news, and there are some things you can do to secure your supply chain. So today, we're going to show you how you can use Tekton chains to add more security to your Tekton-based pipeline. Here's a quick overview of what we're going to show you today. We'll talk a little bit about what Tekton is, since in order to be using Tekton chains, you need to be using Tekton. Then we'll talk about how Tekton chains and SigStore fit into this picture. From there, we'll add in Spire and talk about what role it plays, and then we'll tie it all back to the salsa levels. Finally, you'll see a demo of the whole thing in action. Let's start by talking about what Tekton is which is a topic very dear to my heart. So Tekton is a continuous delivery system that's built on top of Kubernetes. One of its goals is to define a specification for CD workloads that's portable between CD systems. The main pieces of that spec are tasks and pipelines. Tasks are made of steps, which are containers, and pipelines are made up of tasks. For this talk, we're going to be focusing on tasks. So aside from the details of how they're actually executed, for this talk, what's really interesting is their interfaces. Tasks declare the parameters that they need to run, and they also declare the results which they produce after they finish. Together, these parameters and results make up the interface of each task. We, on this slide, you can see an example of a task that declares two parameters, an image and a Docker file. And it declares that after it executes, it will produce two results, an image URL and an image digest. By themselves, tasks don't do anything. In order to actually execute them, you have to create something called a task run, which invokes a task. The task run provides the parameters that satisfy the task runs interface and in the status of the task run, you can find the values of the results that are produced when a task executes. So in this example task run, you can see that for the image and Docker file parameters that the task declared, we're providing the actual values of the image we want to build and where the Docker file is located. And once the task run finished, it produced two results, the image URL, which is the same as the one we intended to build, and the image digest of the image that was actually built. So what this means is that if you can observe the execution of a task run, there's some things that you know. You'll know when the task run is completed. You'll know what happened because you can see the task and the steps that were executed. And then via the task results, you can know more information like what artifacts were produced in the example of the one we were just looking at you know what image was built. There's, there's a question, though, about how much you can actually trust this information, but we'll get back to that in a bit. Cool. So this is where Tekton Chains comes in. 
So at this point, you've done all this cool stuff that Christy just talked about. You've run your task run and you've built an image and pushed it to your registry. Uh, and at this point, uh, Tekton Chains comes in. So you can think of Tekton Chains as the supply chain security manager for Tekton. And it basically runs alongside Tekton in your Kubernetes cluster, but it acts once your task run has completed. So once your task run has completed, Tekton Chains will look at your task run and it'll try and see if there's any artifacts in there that it recognizes. So examples of an artifact it might recognize could be uh, a, an image. It'll take that image and it'll try to sign it. And it'll also generate signed provenance for your entire build. So how does Chains actually sign your code? So this is where something you might have heard of, Sigstor, comes into play. So Chains actually leverages each of the tools and services Sigstor provides to make signing your software really easy. So under the hood, Sigstor uses CoSign to sign both images and attestations. It uses Recore, which is the public transparency log provided by Sigstor, to store uh, records of those signatures and of the provenance attestations. And it even has experimental support for using Fulcio, which is the SIGSTOR certificate authority, to uh, generate certificates for software. And this is nice because it allows you to sign your software without having to set up keys or manage public keys. But there's still something missing. So typically, uh, when you're trying to build something in CACD, you tell your build process to run some steps and your build process will run it and it'll tell you what the outcome was and you just sort of believe it. Uh, Tekton Chains uh, does improve on that a little bit. Tekton Chains is constantly observing your Tekton pipeline, waiting for your task runs to finish and as soon as they finish, it attempts to extract images and sign artifacts for you. But unfortunately, there actually is a, a, a vulnerability in this um, in the system. And the reason for that is that Tekton is built on top of Kubernetes. And to some extent, we are also trusting Kubernetes and we're trusting Tekton. The problem here is that anyone with access to your Kubernetes cluster can go in and edit a task run. So for example, if I'm the admin of my Kubernetes cluster, I could go in and edit every task run I see to say that no image was built or to say that a different image was built. Uh, Tekton Chains will pick up on that task run, believe whatever it's saying and attempt to sign and generate provenance for that image. Uh, so you can see how this is not actually secure because Tekton Chains is trusting um, a process that isn't actually safe. So this is where Spiffy and Spire come in. So Spire is another open source project that you can install on your Kubernetes cluster. And it's basically an identity control plane. It allows you to ensure the identity of the machine you're running on. So uh, when you include Spire as part of your entire supply chain, um, you're signing, so you can uh, use signatures to attest software, but you can also use signatures to attest the hardware that you are running on. So it provides node and workload attestations and basically allows you to prove that the pod that you ran on a certain node um, is actually the pod that was run. So with Spire, we can be sure that a task run is what it claims to be. And this basically eliminates the need to trust the task run um, in and of itself. So at this point, we have um, kind of a more, more secure system on our Kubernetes cluster. So one final element that's missing from the mix that we want to add is salsa. Let's take a look at a video that's going to clear up everything we need to know about salsa. What? No. I had no idea. <laughs> you know, pre 
Priya, I think I just have more questions than answers after watching that, to be honest. Yeah, Christy, I, I was in that video, but I still think I could use an explanation. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about what salsa is. So salsa, oh dear, what does it stand for? Secure so, uh, supply chain levels of software artifacts. They made me say it 20 times during filming. Supply okay. chain levels for software artifacts. Okay, so salsa is a standard that's all about creating levels that allow you to communicate kind of what level your supply chain is at. The end goal is that ultimately what you really want is to have code bases that are auditable and can't be changed by one person that are used to define both the source code that you build and the way that you build it along with verified provenance, along with hermetic builds and changes that are logged and reviewed by at least two people. So all of this <laughs> sounds like an awful lot. And that's again, why Salsa is divided up into levels because you're, you're probably not going to get to the highest hermetic build level right away, but this way you have somewhere to start. So the, le the levels of Salsa are, the first one is just about having provenance. So basically being able to look at your builds and knowing where everything came from and how it was built, but not necessarily signed. Level two is all about having that provenance, but having it signed and then having an element of tamper resistance. So the actual source code and the definitions of the builds themselves are all hosted somewhere. And then from there, we can increase the levels by adding uh, non-falsifiable provenance. And then ultimately in the end, level four, your builds are hermetic and everything is reviewed and you can completely trust the provenance. But we're not going to go that far today. Let's talk a little bit about Salsa level one. So Salsa level one is all about fully automating your build process. This means that all of you, you're not running anything manually. You have some kind of script that's defined that shows exactly what's going to execute. And every time you create an artifact, you generate provenance for that artifact that explains how it came into being. The next level up from there is Salsa level two, which has all the same requirements as Salsa level one, but it adds that version control must be present. So your build steps and your source code must live in version control and the provenance that's being created has to be actually authenticated. So what's great is with Tecton chains, as long as you're using version control, which you definitely should be, <laughs> but taking, assuming we could take that for granted for a moment, which I know isn't true for everyone. So if you wanna start somewhere, definitely start with version control. But assuming we've got version control in play, if you add Tecton chains, you can get Salsa level two right out of the box. And then with the addition of Spire, as Priya was discussing, you can actually be on your way towards Salsa level three. Priya, maybe you can show us a demo of how you can put all these things together. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick demo now to kind of show how we can bring all of these tools, Tecton, Chains, and Spire together. So I've already got a cluster. So my current setup is I have a cluster with Tecton Chains, Tecton Pipelines, and Spire installed. And the first thing I wanna do is create a task run that's going to build and push an image for me. And then we're going to use chains to kind of sign that image and generate some signed provenance for it as well. So let me show you the task that's going to run. So it's basically a pretty simple task to build and push an image. The It's got three steps. The first step, we'll just add a Docker file, one line from Alpine, pretty simple. The second step is going to use Canico to build that image and then push it to my registry. And then the last step, uh, kind of is required to make this work with Tecton Chains, but it's going to store the name of the image that was built in a result called image URL. So that happens right here. So we actually have two results in this task. So one is called image digest and one is called image URL, and they both refer to the same image. And the reason we need these results is because Tecton needs some way to tell Tecton Chains what image was built so that Chains knows what it actually needs to sign. So Chains is, once this ta task run has completed, Chains is going to look at it, it's going to see these results, and it'll know exactly what image it's supposed to be signing and generating provenance for. So let's apply this task to our cluster. 
And then we can kick it off with this taskrun.yaml, which just passes in like a couple key things we need for this all to work. So one of them is just this param, which is the name of my image, um, pointed to my own registry, and a uh, Docker config secret, which is going to provide the authentication needed to actually push my image to my registry. So we can create our taskrun. And check out the log. And hopefully this will finish pretty fast. OK, great. So we have now built this image and pushed it to our registry. So this is where Tecton Chains is going to take over all of the supply chain security that needs to happen once the build has completed. So at this point, Chains is going to see that this task run has completed. Um, it's first going to verify the results um, verify results that were signed by Sire. And if everything is correct, it'll generate a signature and generate some signed provenance. So if you take a look at the task run now, by now, change should have probably finished running. So we can see some interesting stuff in the actual task run description. So the first thing is this annotation that change added, which is just that it was actually signed. There was no failure, no error. Um, as Chains was running. And it actually also adds a second annotation, which points to a log index in the record transparency log. So this log index is going to contain an entry that has details around uh, the signatures that were generated by Chains um, for the specific task run. So we can go in and we can search the log and look at this log index and kind of learn more about this build. Um, there's some stuff down here as well that we should take a look at. So we have the image digest and the image URL that we had specified in the task run itself. But there's actually some new results in there that we didn't add in ourselves. And this is actually where Spire comes into play. So while the task run was executing, when we created, uh, when we stored a result um, on the task run, we actually also requested a signature from Spire to kind of attest that this is that this result is correct and this is actually what happened. So for each result, there's an associated signature um, proving that the result is correct. Uh, we also have an SVID, which is kind of like a certificate that Spire provided stored as a result. And we're going to use the cert and Chains will use the certificate to verify the signatures of the results um, against the results themselves. If all of this verification checks out, that's when Chains knows that the task run wasn't modified, that nobody went in and changed it. And so Chains knows that it's safe to sign the image and generate the signed provenance. So at this point, we probably want to check that the image was actually signed and that the attestation itself was signed. And we also want to take a look at the attestation itself. So I already set up a signing key as a key pair um, as a Kubernetes secret. So we can take a look at that. It should be in the Tecton Chains namespace. And it's called signing secrets. So this holds the private and public key pair that was used for signing. And I actually have the public key just uh, on my computer as well. So we're going to use this to verify all of our signatures. So the first thing we want to do is verify the image itself. And I believe it was called in a code change demo. Hopefully this works. Okay, great. Okay, so um, against the public key, the image was actually signed. And then we can also use cosign to verify the uh, provenance was signed as well. And so cosign verify attestation should work as well. Great, and so it does. Um, and there's some information about the payload itself, which you can base 64 to decode and see what the attestation itself was. Now, say I'm a consumer of this image and I need to learn more about how it was built um, or I want to know like what Tecton Task actually built this image. So I can get the digest of this image. I'm going to grab it from the verification step we just ran. And I can actually search the entire record transparency log and look for entries that match up to this digest. So we see that there is one from the image that we just built. And we can actually take a look at this entry specifically. And you can see that we can find the same attestation that was printed out when we ran ver the cosine verif verify attestation command. So with some formatting, we can actually take a look at what this looks like. Steps to this. 
And we can see an in-title attestation for the build that we just ran. So the subject was the image that I just built. Um, some of the parameters that were passed into the task run are all marked there, the name of the task itself and the um, pod ID that was run. And then in the recipe, we have a step uh, we have a step corresponding to every single step in the task itself. So we have the step where we created our Docker file, the Canico step where we built and pushed the image, and then the final step where we actually wrote the URL to the result and some information about when the build was started and when the build was finished. So this is kind of nice because maybe in a few weeks or a few months after you know the task has been deleted from your cluster, you can still go back and see how an image was built if you, uh, if you need to find out more. So this integration between Tecton, Pipelines, and Spire is uh, our next step on the road to Sulfur 3 for Tecton and Tecton Chain. All right, so the Spire support that Prio is just demoing will actually require a few changes to how Tecton Pipelines operates. If you want to follow along with those changes, Priya has put together something called a Tecton Enhancement Proposal, or a TEP, so actually TEP 89 in this case, which describes the problem and we'll be going through all of our different options for how we can add the support into Tecton pipelines. So in closing, Tecton chains can give you at least Salsa level two supply chain security for free, as long as you're using Tecton. Great, so uh, what can you do now that you've listened to this talk? Uh, go ahead and try out Tecton Chains. If you've got Tecton running in your cluster, you can follow along with our Getting Started tutorial or our Signed Provenance tutorial. And actually, I think if you do everything in our Signed Provenance tutorial um, and start applying it to your actual builds, uh, you should be able to achieve Salsa 2 pretty easily. Uh, yeah, and then you can uh, pin this cool looking metal on your own GitHub repo. Salsa 2 compliant, let's go. <laughs> It's totally official. It's a totally official medal. It's totally a real thing <laughs> that Chrissy didn't draw this morning. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Um, it's been great. And yeah, I hope we're, I think we're going to be around to answer questions in chat. Maybe we've already been answering questions. I guess we'll see. Great. Thank you so much.